So it has been about three months since we finally completed our root cellar. We've been getting a ton of requests to do a update or tour video on this. And the only reason we have been delaying is we have been busy canning, but we are pretty much done canning. So today is the day we're going to give you guys an inside look at our root cellar. So if you didn't catch us in a video building this thing, it is a earth bag root cellar. And what that means is this thing is built out of sandbags. The dimensions of it are eight by eight and it is about seven feet underground. A lot has changed since we last showed a video on the root cellar, especially a couple things on the outside. Let's go over those first. So something that we quickly realized with the cellar is that when we got a lot of rain, we were having some major problems with erosion. So kind of our quick fix for this year is we gathered a bunch of rocks from our property and stacked them up all on the edge. And it actually seems to be working pretty good. We haven't had any erosion and we've been getting a ton of rain lately. So we didn't cover the top section with rocks and that is because the ground is gonna be freezing pretty soon. So this mud is gonna go away. And also we didn't wanna put even more weight on the top than we had to. We also made a couple changes to our hatch. So when we first built the hatch, all it was was two by fours basically. So what we did is on top of the two by fours, we put one and a half inch foam insulation all the way around. And then we sandwiched more two by fours on the outside, what you're seeing right here. So we have a good amount of insulation in the hatch going down to the cellar. The next thing that we did is we turned our vent caps upside down. So we're not gonna get any rain in there. And then we also ended up adding another vent, which is right on the other side. So this is our other vent and this one actually goes all the way down inside to the floor of the root cellar. And you may be thinking that this hatch is kind of low to the ground and that's going to get snowed in, but we are going to be managing the snow on the top of the hatch. So we'll be clear when we need to go in and out of this thing. So before we take off the lid and head down in the cellar, we have a question that we wanted to answer and that is how do we get things in and out of the root cellar? And to be honest with you, it's pretty simple. We either load up a small wooden crate that I built with canned food and one person just brings it down there. Or if it's something bigger, like a tote that we have our carrots in, we just help each other. So it's actually not that big of an issue getting things in and out of here. So let's get the top off and head down. Welcome down into the root cellar. First things first, let me show you how we light this thing. I either will have my headlight on, I always carry a small flashlight in my pocket, and if we're gonna be down here for a while, I use our O-light and it comes with an attachment that turns it into a lantern. So that's what we're gonna be using today. All right, so something that we added down here in the cellar is we reinforced the stairs. We added cleats on most of them where we could get them. And then we just ran a bunch of long, thick nails to the sides. So the ladder is holding up great. Next thing we added was a sump pump, which is right underneath the stairs. So when we first dug the root cellar, we initially wanted to dig it 10 feet deep and we did, but we hit water. So what we had to do was we had to fill back in the dirt until we were about seven feet and we weren't seeing water anymore. That was in the summer. We kind of knew that in the springtime, the water was gonna rise up and we might get some water in the floor in here. Turns out it happened a lot earlier. We did get some water in here on the floor just a couple months ago. So what we did is we installed our sump pump, which has been working great. I put an attachment on it to hook a garden hose to it. And when we see the bucket starting to fill up with water, we turn on the sump pump, pump it for a little while until we don't see any more water, then we're good to go. So the water table right now, if you can see down here on the bucket, it's coming up just a little bit above this bucket. It's not ideal, it's not perfect, but it's also not the end of the world and it is still letting us use this root cellar. We're just gonna have a little bit of water on the ground if we're not pumping it with the sump pump. Before we jump into the tour of what is down here, I was gonna go over a few more things. First off, we get a lot of questions about temperature and if it's frozen down here. We have already dipped into the teens just briefly and what we found was we were staying at 38 degrees down here. So. I'm not personally concerned that this stuff in here is going to freeze this year. We are down below the ground and it just feels like that. It feels like a root cellar. It's wet and damp and it feels pretty stable for the most part. So along with that means that we have excess moisture in here. If you guys remember when we built this, we were in the 90 to 100% range and we are still there. We did try a few things with fans down here and try to get that humidity down. I think in the summertime we were able to get it about to 70, but it's just not realistic for us to have our hatch open due to the possibility of too cold of air coming in here and also exposing our potatoes to light. 
Where that comes into play is certain crops store wonderfully down here. So our potatoes, our carrots, our beets, leeks, anything like that that needs really high humidity does great. It's not really great for dry goods and it's definitely not good for squashes, garlic, onions, things like that. And I didn't really anticipate that, but all that stuff is up in our cabin. We haven't had any issues with rust so far. These shelves are doing really good. What we did do was line the shelves with this little bathroom rated plastic liner and it's super easy to clean if it gets any dirt on it. We have had a little bit of mold growth here and there on certain jars and what we found works is wiping them with vinegar before we bring them down just to get rid of any residue before they're in storage. Another major concern was earthquakes and we do have earthquakes pretty frequently here. We've had two earthquakes in the five range. I think one was a 5.0 and one was a 5.2 and they were decent sized earthquakes. I feel pretty confident saying this shelter would be fine in the seven earthquake that we had before. I think some of our jars we'd suffer losses, but we did add a little bungee to help with that. We don't have it completely perfect in here, but I'm not overly worried about it. We've already had these canned goods be through multiple earthquakes and we were fine. We just finished counting all of these cans yesterday and we are sitting at right under 550. I think it would have been a little bit more if we harvested a moose, but we're pretty happy with what we have for this winter. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. On this first shelf, we have all salmon and this is pink salmon right here. We actually have a mixture of salmons up here as far as how they're processed. We have some brine, some smoked. This is some of the red salmon that we caught a little bit earlier in the year. We have about 110 jars left. We've eaten quite a few already, and it would have been nice to go into winter with quite a bit more, but we were counting on getting a moose that we didn't. So the next shelf is more of our staples. We've got, first over in the corner, we've got chicken stock, and this is also chicken stock just processed at a different date. We have our celery stock, and this is basically for soups, stews. It's celery, onions, herbs. Next, we have our pasta sauce. And then we go into our tomato sauce. We're going to go down one more row. In the corner, we have a few cans of that lard that we made a while back. And I have a little bit of applesauce back here. We have some of that zucchini bread that we made earlier. We just have a few cans of that left. And a whole bunch of green salsa. Next, we move on to canned greens. Here we have just canned green beans, and then next to them is canned green beans, some bunching onions, and carrots. This jar is a little bit funny to look at, but it is purple carrots and parsnips. Because of those purple carrots, it's all purple. We have some lovely carrots right here. And all of this is pressure canned besides the acidic foods like the green salsa that we water bathed. Onto our other shelf, we have sauerkraut. We have lots of cans of those. And then we have, this is delicious. This is dill, kohlrabi, cauliflower. It's a really light pickle mixture. And we've had one of those cans so far. It's really yummy. The next row, we have some relish. We have pickled onions, jalapeno, and carrots. This is cowboy candy marinade, and these are the cowboy candy or candied jalapenos that we made a while back. Back in this corner, we have a favorite of ours, which is banana peppers or pepperoncinis. Now we are on to our jellies, and we have first a apple jelly. This is some of local apples that we picked up and turned into jelly. And we have blueberry fireweed <laughs> syrup. So I put some really special code on these cans that I'm probably gonna have a really hard time remembering this winter. We have lots of those. Then we have elderberry syrup, which is from red elderberries and that's why it has that color. This is fireweed jelly. That one has a nice set. This one's my favorite, WBRHJ, and I believe that means watermelon berry rosehip jelly. That's a really gorgeous color. And we have one more, which was blueberry and crowberry jelly. So we are stocked as far as jellies and syrups go. This is our last row of canned goods. 
This is a coleslaw mixture that we made this year, which is really good. This was a first for us. It's a recipe I found online, but we altered it a little bit. So there is collards, carrots, I think we may have kohlrabi in there too, and there is red cabbage, as you can tell. Next, I have pickled green beans. And we have a funny looking jar. This is called a garden antipasta and it is a olive oil and vinegar marinated with veggies. So there are carrots, eggplant, there's herbs in here. I also have some onions and peppers and it does look pretty funny because the olive oil has thickened up because of the temperature. But this is a super good thing to have as an appetizer. We also have a new recipe here. This was a sweet pickle. So we've got honey in here. We've got onions, peppercorns, herbs, kohlrabi, and some daikon radishes. And then we have our pickles. And we did just a basic dill pickle recipe. We have lots of those back here. We've got some big ones. I think these ones are just whole, whole pickles since we had some big ones. Next to that shelf, we have all of our potatoes. We have four rows of potatoes, and I think that's a good amount for us this winter. We'll probably have more for next year because we want to also save the seed to plant them for the following year. And these guys are cured now. They've been down here for a few weeks. They are rock hard, and they're doing wonderful. As long as we keep our hatch closed, they should be fine, and they shouldn't sprout prematurely. You may have noticed that we didn't fill everything up this year, so we have more room next year to grow more food and to have a place to store it. Let's go over what is in our tubs. This first one is carrots. We actually have two tubs with carrots, and that one's just put away since we're not going to be eating them that quickly. And next I have some apples. We got these apples at a local orchard, and we are going to be making apple cider vinegar out of them soon. This little five gallon bucket was just some extra carrots we had. And so far, I mean, they're storing really well in these. It's just the perfect amount of moistness. We've come down here and got, gotten a few carrots already. This next container is the beets that we stored just a little while back. And behind me, we have our leeks and we have a cabbage. So I just have one sole cabbage that was mature this late. And usually you leave a lot of their leaves on and you hang them up. And this root cellar is working wonderful. It's almost identical to putting something like this in a crisp drawer in your refrigerator. So our leeks are looking good down here and I'm gonna take this off to show you guys some of the carrots. So far these have been storing well in the shavings. They're really, they're still really hard, not soft at all. And this is our first year doing this, so we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna get those covered back up. So that's it for what we have down here. At a different date, we're gonna go over some of the stuff we are storing in our connex and in our cabin. So far, this has been great for us to store food because you can see that this is quite a lot of food to put in our cabin. In fact, I don't even know where we would put it all and our potatoes would definitely not store that well in there. The question we receive a lot is, how do you determine how much you're going to grow and put away for winter? And being our first year in Alaska, this is a little bit of a different experience since there was a major shift on how much food we actually canned. I personally would want to have a little bit more going into winter, but I do think that this is a really good start. And we just try to grow as much as we can for that year. So we're not trying to be canning for years and years in advance or anything like that. These are one year's season cans. That's why I'm not overly worried about rust or any sort of growth on the jars. But with that being said, these cans behind me would last much longer. We've had canned food that's three, four years old. So if we have a crop that we did particularly well in and we can too much of it, that's great. It'll just carry on for the next year for us. Another question we get a lot is, would you change anything or how would you do it differently? And my answer is yes. And the first thing I would do differently is not have put this wood in here. So we already know that's going to be kind of like an immediate redo, or at least within a few years. They are holding up and they're pretty strong. I'm not at all concerned about them, but with this bark, they're just not going to last very long. So again, we're happy that we at least have somewhere to store our food this winter. And I do think that this setup will most likely work for us in the future, but the roof is going to have to come off eventually. Eric's going to talk a little bit more about some of the changes we may be doing in the future. Okay, so first thing I want to point out on the root cellar. This thing actually is working. It does work. It works great, too. I mean, it's like you're standing in a refrigerator down here, and it fits our needs. We're able to store all of our canned food down here for a whole winter. But that being said, 
We are going to kind of just let this thing be how it is through the whole winter. And then we're gonna kind of judge on what needs to be changed. We do know that the water table rising up is gonna be a problem. We don't wanna be having to come down here in our waders just to get our food. So we're gonna to have to deal with that issue at some point next year. But like I said, we wanna kind of let this thing do what it's gonna do before we make any drastic changes. And then like Ariel said with the roof, this was kind of just what we had to build with. It was kind of spur of the moment when we built this root cellar, we were planning it, but we didn't know we were gonna start when we did. So the roof, it will change eventually, but right now it's still holding up pretty good. To end this video, we are gonna show you guys what we look forward to coming down here and grabbing in the middle of winter. Okay, I'm gonna do it. My favorite thing that I'm gonna be grabbing this winter is this cowboy candy. This stuff's awesome. We've already, I think we even have a can in the fridge right now, actually we're going through. But the best thing about this is when you're done with all the jalapenos, you have this awesome juice that you can use for cooking. Okay, so I'm kind of cheating. I have two, and these are both new recipes for us, but this coleslaw is freaking killer. This is my favorite thing to come down here and get along with these sweet, pickled vegetables. We love these as well. Those are my two favorites. Okay, and since we're down here, we're gonna do a little bit of grocery shopping and we'll see you guys on the next video.